Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on the YouTube account. We have a brand new code, sir. I believe there's actually two active codes right now, but as you can see, the diamonds continue to increase. We got 300, we got 600 from the last one on Father's Day, and now this one is 1,200 diamonds as well as some resources. So make sure you go ahead and use the code. I will put it down below. Now, in today's video, we're gonna be looking at Ciro's Pet Guide. He is a fellow content creator over on YouTube and a couple other places. Crowdsources a lot of the information, which is huge, guys, allowing him to provide and build a lot of these guides. Visual effects are super hard, which is why I wanted to cover it. So looking at the beasts, remember when we released, we didn't have many beasts. Now we're at the point, guys, we have a lot. We have a lot of beasts that we're continuing to see, um, even with the Fox Fatale. Overall, we're not seeing a lot of utility with her in different game modes other than PvP because of the crowd control aspect. And a lot of these are not working until they are on low are on higher levels. So let's go ahead and take a look at the guide. All right, guys. So here we are looking at the guide again. Check out his YouTube channel right there, youtube.com slash at zero underscore GT. But looking at the pet guide, visually stunning, guys. I, I love how we put this together. And we even have the new pet in here. So he kind of tiered it into lists. Now, when you look at the list, it's not the very first one it is the best pet by far, hands down. He tiered it into great, which is the top one, good, and then meh, kind of in the bottom. And let's run through this and I'll show you exactly why. Now, Wing Lion, of course, one of the most versatile beasts that we have seen within AFK Arena. High ultimate damage heroes, small energy buff. So definitely looking here. And it is also color coded. So looking at the bottom, this very bottom piece, minimum, good, max, and then meh, average, good, best. And you can see kind of the breakdown with the notes of how we're looking. So the blue is the best while the green is good. Now, one thing to remember with the beast guys is when you're building them out, you want to build them evenly because of the copies that they require. But you can see which teams they're utilized. So again, let's break down the wing line. So six is okay. 12 is better. 18 is ideally where you want to build him. And then you can see right here, the armor classes, intelligence and agility are the two strongest meaning that he carries the stats that help the intelligence and the agility heroes the best, but not really up to that blue standard that we've seen before. And he provides a high energy damage hero. So looking at this great column, so the five beasts that we have in this very top, that are those are the ones that you wanna build that actually have a really, really strong priority. And again, as we continue to get through this, you'll see exactly why. So then we have the owl. You can see guys, intelligence is the best that we have right here, it is in the blue. Um, three is good, 15 is really ideal, 18 is as high as you wanna build them. High damage over time, grouped allies and summoners. Now that is because his ability is an AOE effect. So if you have um, summoned allies in there, if you have you know, summoned, I'm thinking like Grez, I'm thinking Baden, um, if you have summons in there, it is going to affect them as well because of the AOE effect that we have in there. And then of course, intelligence is going to get the most benefit from this. Now, Savage Souffle, the zero, it does work with literally nothing, nine, 15, 18. And you'll notice most of these are 18 because it's adding in the stats and abilities um, that the beasts do, prov to do provide. Um, you can see in here, agility is really the strong one followed by strength and then by intelligence. Creates energy advantage, removes energy debuffs. I like the Savage Souffle for the crowd control aspect. Um, feeds energy, controls enemies, buffs damage at 18, which is super important. Again, a lot of these are really the 18 build, which is the reason we've been pu pushing the Resonance Crystal all the way up to 18. Now, Talisman, I love Talisman. Improves defense and controls enemies. Invade, dive, hypos, Greyborns, hypo counter. He is just a monster. Even when it comes to campaign formations, like you've seen, through I'm um, finishing out chapter 49. When it comes to fighting Greyborns, when it comes to fighting Hypos, um, he can crowd control like crazy um, through all of the battles, which is really cool. So you see nine's good, 12's good, 18 is good, but even at zero will work incredibly well. Strength and agility are really the focus here. Now Slumbering Seal, the sixth man party. So Slumbering Seal deals damage and provides light crowd control like a sixth hero. This is what it has been said since Slumbering Seal came out. We've actually had a couple campaign stages that I just went through where the Slumbering Seal is doing three, four, five X what the um, what your heroes are doing, which is kind of crazy as a as a beast adds damage if you can survive to alt often, 
which of course, when we look at Belinda, when you look at a couple of different formations, we have seen him used incredibly well. Um, I've been running him most recently with Rem and Amelia, again, working incredibly well in that aspect, because of course, Amelia is gonna provide energy, resulting in more ults, resulting in more damage from the Slumbering Seal. Now looking at our good category, guys, we have Blade Ridge, shares uh, stat teams, single carry, intelligence heroes. The intelligence hero, of course, the awakened version of Belinda. A lot of players do use it in there if you don't have to worry about the survivability. Intelligence is strong here, and this one only goes to 15, which is good. Now, the Phantasmoth um, improves normal attacks, debuffs enemies. Really strong with Raku, really strong with the Awakened version of Thane. Um, we see those combinations run a lot of times. Also, with the um, Awakened version of Thane and, and the Awakened version of Athelia, we have seen a lot of play from the Moth in both of those formations. 6 and 12 are good. 18 is really solid. Then Intelligence and Agility are the focus there. Now, the Rock Lizard. Protective team, provide shield. Again, a very unique protect squishy back row. So most of the treasure scramble is run with the Crown Rock Lizard with on the Awakened version of Belinda. But there are also a lot of other game modes like the Dune Destroyer, where this pet is absolutely priority number one because of the shielding aspect where you can't heal. The, this pet will actually give you the shielding. You can also see strength and agility or strength and intelligence are the two strong key points here. And lower level here only built up to 12 instead of going to the, the 15 or the 18. And again, I have this pet at, I believe, 12 or 13. Works incredibly, incredibly well in those specific niche situations. Now, Fire Breather, unfortunately, he is falling, falling further down the line. But the big thing that he brings, guys, is prevents the enemy healing. That is huge when you're facing Taylene, when you're facing, you know, PvP teams that have a lot of healing in there. Um, super, super important. Squishy melee carry, enemy mages, enemy heals. That is the big thing, guys, is they can really protect the carry. So depending on the formation you're running, a lot of times I see the Fire Breather with the Awakened version of Brutus, um, with Anasta, with Antandra, with a couple of the very strong heroes that can carry and can carry incredibly well. Fire Breather works very well. Now looking at Fox Fatale, um, you can see 12, 15, 18 right here, Intelligence, um, additional crowd control, which is awesome. It's almost like a version of Mahira. Helps keep team alive versus dangerous enemies. If you can get the charm up, I've used it a couple times in the new um, game mode that we have. Works again incredibly, incredibly well. I'm super impressed with the hero from the charm PvP side, but we're going to have to see exactly if and when she comes into um, anywhere when it comes to the rest of the game. Now, Bell Bello works incredibly well at 18 is pretty much worthless without having this pet at 18 um mediocre before 18 very strong after 18 healing good damage buffs but again at 18 only so this is a pet unfortunately you're not going to have any utility until you get to a much higher beast resonance up to that 18 um or taking this beast specifically to 18 um to use it now i've tried Using it in different formations, even under 18, again, absolutely worthless. Doesn't really make a, a difference at all in formations because the abilities are not there. Now, Polar Beast, unfortunately, same with Feline Vespero, um, have seen very middle to no gameplay anymore. Um, buffs your control, provides light crowd control, middle back hero with CC, which is usually Mahira in this case. Agility is the buff with a level 15. And then the Feline Vespero, short of PvP, I don't see it used anywhere. Limited use within Taylene in the Cursed Realm. I don't think he's even in the Cursed Realm. I think he's been replaced um, right now. And then at 18, very underwhelming. Drains enemies energy, feeds team energy at high levels. If this was much higher with the energy drain, which it is not, it doesn't give you much energy really at all. Um, and again, general pet priority, guys. Row 1, top metric pets, required milestones. I'm good, and then the meh, kind of the, the formation down there. Now, focus until 12. 12 is the game changer, guys. So if you're not focusing the Beast Resonance up to 12, I would advise doing it at 12, even if 12 is just kind of where you keep them at for a significant amount of time. 12 is a break point for a lot of the, the pets for having the abilities and the skills. At 12, there are select keys to focus to 18. Um, once key pets are at 18, continue working on Resonance until all are 18. Uh, once you hit 18, focus on the seal, talisman, and owl 
are going to give you the most bang for your buck when you're building out those those beasts so all right guys so that'll do it for today's video i'm going to put a link to everything down below so you can check it out let me know in the comments what you guys think and as always thank you guys for watching